Hey guys and welcome to the show. So after I posted the last part of this series, I asked you guys what you'd like to see next and an overwhelming majority of you said you wanted player movement or location save of some kind. Now we don't exactly have a game world just yet, we don't actually even know what kind of game we're making. But that doesn't necessarily need to stop us from covering these kinds of concepts. But in order to get to that kind of feature, I really feel that we need to improve our Node.js project structure, because right now everything's kind of in one file and it's a bit of a mess. So in this video, let's go ahead and improve the project structure, which will allow us to add more endpoints, more controllers, which we can then integrate with within our Game Maker Studio project. And maybe one day in the future, we can add an Untail boss fight. XND, don't worry, hang in there. Now, before we begin, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so you can get notifications about these videos when they do drop. Right, so here is our project. This is part four. Um, I'm following on from part three. So if we go into our server, we see all the goodies. As you can see, everything is in here from um, the DB to all our endpoints to actually the server itself. So what we actually want to do is we want to extract the DB into its own file. We want to be able to create different controllers for different endpoints. So for example, we can have four slash players, we can have four slash worlds, we could have four slash scores, all kinds of really cool endpoints without having to put everything inside the server.js file. Um, now all the server.js file would really have is the server. So we would register the endpoints, it would still have access to all the fun stuff. It'll just be far more organized. So following tradition, we're gonna add a new folder called SRC, it stands for source. All our source code is gonna go into here. I'm gonna create another folder called databases. Maybe we want to have multiple databases. Um, this is going to be a file that can handle the connections to those databases. Um, and right now we just have one database, GameDB, but if we were to add more, this would be a really cool way to organize them. Inside databases, I'm gonna add a file called uh, db.js. And db.js is going to extract all the db code from our server. So I'm gonna start picking it apart, putting it in a place, knowing where that place is, and moving forward. So what we need is we need the db name, we need this whole connection over here that's gonna go inside there, and to make this available to other files, we're gonna say module exports equals db. Now, so other files can import resources from this file, just like that, module exports db, very powerful stuff. Right, then I need to go back to server. Oh, I mustn't forget this, it also needs to go there. Just like that. And up here at the top, I'm going to say const db equals require. And here we just put a location of the file. So single quotes dot four slash src slash databases slash db, just like that. So now wherever we were using db before, because it thought it was in this file, it'll use it as if nothing ever changed. Similar thing, all these controllers. We don't want to have controllers right here in server.js. If we had worlds, um, scores, all kinds of things. Imagine how long this file is going to get. So instead, again, in our SRC folder, we're gonna create a new folder called controllers, okay? And we're gonna have a new file in there called players controllers. Keeping things plural, players. We're gonna create, after all, the RESTful API. And again, we're gonna go into server. We're gonna grab all of these endpoints just like that. Control X, paste them straight in here. And at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and say module.exports, and I'm exporting an object, which I will fill up just now. Okay, so this file also needs access to the DB. So again, we're gonna say const DB equals require, and then here the string is um, relative path dot dot for slash databases slash DB. Okay, so now that shouldn't explode. Then these we need to rename to something else, something that we can reference or export and reference in another file. So this one we're gonna say const, what does it do? Insert, so that's post players or player. And we need a req and a res arrow and that. And then I need to get rid of this one. So actually, if you see the difference between these, all I'm doing is removing this first part and that round brace. So let's go do this one easily. This is a get, gets all. So this one's gonna be called something like const get players. And we get rid of that one. This one we can call const get player. 
get rid of that one. This one we can call const delete player. Get rid of that one. Don't worry about the roots. We'll fix the roots in a second. Or at least I'll show you how to use them elsewhere. Post get get delete. What am I missing? Where's output? Did we forget to copy output? Oh, we don't actually have a put yet. Okay, one day we'll bring in a put. Okay, I must remember that. Maybe we'll allow the user to change his name, but uh, it's a story for another time. So now I can go and copy all these names and put them in here. Post player and get players and get player and delete player. So now those will be available to any other file that um, references this one. All right, now this isn't gonna work um, because remember we deleted all that routing and the routing was the four slash players, remember? So the request to know where to go, which, which route to send to which function. So I'm gonna create a new folder in here called uh, roots and in here I'm gonna create an uh, index.js file and make sure my spacing is two. And here we can grab express over there. Then we want to create an instance of a router. Express.router, there it is. Now we need to make sure that it can get things from the player's controller. So remember these, we want to map roots to these functions. So we can say const controller equals require and relative path dot dot slash controller slash blackout helps us find those. Okay, and then we want to say const roots equals takes in an app. This app object is this guy over here. So we're going to take this express app, we're going to send it through into this roots function, and then it's going to set some roots on that. So if I say roots over here, I can say router dot post. And this is where the four slash players comes back. And we're going to map that to controller dot post player. Easy. Router dot get is going to map to players dot slash. Just like that. And that's controller dot get players. Router dot. Uh, then we want another get over here, and that goes to four slash players slash ID. All right, and that is controller dot get player. Then lastly, router dot delete goes to, and that's the players also four slash ID. Dot delete player. Post to the post, gets to the gets, delete to the delete, and now we need to say app dot uh, use, oops, use router, just like that. And again, module exports equals roots. Cool, so let's go back to our server. We need to bring in that roots object, uh, const roots equals Fire. And here again, when you say dot backslash src slash roots, then here we can say roots, taking in the app, just like that. Let's get empty spaces. DB is used down there to set things up. Remember that? Let's put that at the top. Okay, create an instance of express, reference the roots, reference the DB roots, send through the app to set the roots and tell it that we're interacting in JSON. So if I go to our terminal and I run server.js, ah, okay, let's see what we got. Uh, oopsie, it's <laughs> node server.js. Okay, good, didn't explode, 8080, game db has been connected to, let's go over to Postman. Remember we had these requests, post, delete, get, get by. So let's do the get. I should just be able to send this off and I should get a response just like we did before with everything in one file. There we go, sending requests. Let's preview this. Can I look at pretty? Pretty doesn't look that pretty, but anyway. 
Oh, I changed it to JSON. There we go. Three, four, five, six. That worked. Okay, let's do get by ID. I'm going to do three. There it is, three. Let's send. Okay, change to JSON. That worked. Um, and as we're doing this, if we go back to our Visual Studio over here, when we make changes like doing a delete and whatnot, it's actually going to tell us. So let's go and do, let's delete this guy. So delete. I'm going to send delete number three. Send. Okay, so 200. Okay, that's good. Let's go back here to over here. Delete a player with ID3. That's very good. What else can we do? Let's add a new guy. Um, let's call him um, Bobby. Bobby's going to use Adventurer 4. Uh, send. All right, look at this. Can we property name of undefined? So this is actually coming back from our server. Let's see what it says here. Command server, uh, sorry, sorry, current location. Okay, good. So let's go to place controller. Let's go to the post. Let's see what's coming through here. A console log request. So it's saying that there's no name field of undefined. The so body must be undefined. So let's save that. Restart. Okay, run this again. Okay, still error. And if we go back, let's go back over here. Here we go. So here's the request. I think at the bottom somewhere we should see the body. Uh, if I can find it, can I control F here? I can. Body has body true. Not seeing anything over there. Okay, so something is definitely up. It says there's a body, but there isn't a body. Let's go check out our server again. I wonder if it's because we're kind of setting the roots before telling it that it's expecting it as a body of JSON. So let's just swap these. Okay, let's try again. Okay, we're running. Go. Mm. Oh, look, check this out. Check this out. Now we have a body over here. Now we have a body. Okay, cool. So let's go back here. Let's do request.body. Oh, well, look, maybe these now need to be case sensitive. Okay, so let's let's stop that. Let's go back here, make this a lowcase n, lowcase s. Run this guy again. Go back here, run. Eight. Okay, good. That worked. Okay, cool. And then it says add a player poppy eleven with sprite four. Okay. So that needs to be case sensitive, and we did need to uh, swap these. Also, I don't really like this over here, passing in the app, um, and then mutating that a bit. So let's just make this a little better by going into index. Rather, let's do configure router. And what this is to do rather is let's move that to server. Can just put it there for safekeeping. And here I just want to return the router. So what we'll do, we're going to take an app and we'll export that. So we call configure router. It then returns the router all configured and then we can tell the app to use it. So now we can do that like that. And this will be uh, configure router like that. That looks nicer. Okay, so let's stop and restart. Let's run through all our endpoints again. Let's do a get. There's the data. Get by ID. There's the data. Let's try to delete that number eight that we created. Uh, that worked. Let's do get all. There should be no eight in here. Very good. And let's create a new one. New one. Adventurer one. Send nine. Fantastic. Okay, so that's all actually working. We've extracted all our endpoints into the player's controller. That is fantastic. So in our next video, we can actually go ahead and create some sort of controller that'll manage the location of the player. So maybe it could have a column for the player ID, it could have a column for the X coordinate, a column for the Y coordinate, and maybe a foreign key column for the room identifier. And that can tell the player which room they're in and what their coordinates are. 
So if you like this video, please feel free to comment, rate and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you want us to do next. A link to the project files is in the description. If you like what I'm doing here, check out my Patreon. I really do appreciate the support. So until next time, happy coding and I'll see you then.